Greetings and salutations. I am Bishop E.E. E. Hunter. And I'm Apostle LaQuilla Hunter. And together, we Greetings are the Hunters. Hunters. We want to thank you so much for tuning in for powerful teaching, preaching, and inspiration every Wednesday at 12 a.m. Thank you for your support and supporting our CDs, our books, and just everything that we're doing. We want to let you know that we appreciate you, and we always look forward to having a high time on the HP Spotlight. Thank you. Thank mm-hmm. you.
Sunday Morning is a song of inspiration to uplift your spirits, written by the Hunters. Download this awesome song today, available on all digital outlets. You won't be disappointed. We also encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, 100 with the Hunters, and be sure to hit that bell to get all of our notifications. 100 with the Hunters on YouTube. Before You Call Me Sis, A Term of Endearment by Apostle Aquila Hunter is a thought-provoking book that challenges us to understand the true meaning of sisterhood. Some women are so used to using the term sis or sister that it is used loosely. They don't take into consideration the definition of this word as a term of endearment. Many people have been slandered, broken, and destroyed by the same women who call themselves sisters. This book is a great read and it will empower and educate the reader on what true sisterhood should look like. It will also help them to evaluate current relationships to ensure they are healthy, promoting advancement, and are mutually beneficial. Purchase your copy today on our website, www.hpmusicandarts.com. To God be the glory. Come on, let's give praise to Jesus. Oh, come on, that expectation that Pastor Esther Obasiki was talking about. Come on, we're anticipating what God will do. All glory and honor and praise to him. We certainly honor the man of God, Pastor Prince Obasiki. Come on, let's bless God for the man of God. We bless God for your gracious founder, Pastor Esther Obasiki. We celebrate the queens of Esther. Come on. Oh, come on, that's you. Come on, the royal daughters of God. Hallelujah. Amen. I certainly celebrate my husband, Bishop Ernest E. Hunter. God is good. My husband, God bless you. Amen. Honored to be here. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We're excited about this gathering. We're excited about this time. We're excited about what God is saying and what he is doing. Amen. A beautiful country. We have enjoyed ourselves so far. Let's give it up for your protocol. Amazing women and men of God. Hallelujah. As we hasten unto the word, we're going to look in the book of Genesis. For Genesis begins to deal with the blessing, the first blessing that we see that God bestows upon his people. Genesis chapter 12. And we're going to look at verse 1 through 3. What a powerful theme obtaining coming into the covenant blessings of God Genesis 12 1 through 3 now the Lord had said unto Abram get thee out of thy country and from thy kindreds and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee and I will make thee a great nation and I will bless thee and I will make thy name great and thou shall be a blessing and I will bless them that bless thee and I will curse him that curseth thee and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed father we thank you that we are blessed in the city we're blessed in the field we thank you that we are the head and not the tail we thank you that fresh fire will fall tonight. We thank you that signs, miracles, and wonders will take place. We thank you, O oh Father, that we've gathered for you, God, to thrust us into new dimensions. We thank you for fresh revelation. We thank you, O oh God, for abundance of blessings. We thank you, O oh God, for your fresh power. And Father, you get all the glory, you get all the praise, and you get all the honor. In Jesus' name. Come on, let's give him praise. If we would, we would use for a subject on this afternoon as I was fasting and praying. I've been fasting and praying since the invitation. And the Lord began to talk to me. He said, tell the woman of God that you're too blessed to be stressed. 
<laughs> oh, come on. You're too blessed to be stressed. And so he's going to talk to us about lifting the stress off of our life. What does, what does stress mean? It means to experience mental or emotional strain, attention. The word blessed means to be endowed with power and favor and protection. And when I begin to look at the staggering numbers of women who deal with stress, it says one out of four women deal with stress. I don't know about you, stress sometimes can be uh, overwhelming. It can be perplexed. Anxiety can overtake you because you're worrying about what is going to be on the other side or how provision will come or if you're like me, what I'm going to wear. Stress comes in all forms. Stress, am I going to be able to raise my children? Stress, will I be a good wife? Stress, will my daughter be able to be the woman of God that God called her to be? And sometimes the stress just to make ends meet. The stress just to make sure that I'm operating and walking in the integrity of God. Life can get the best of you. Uh, it can make you not be able to sleep and be fatigued and, and your hair is falling out and the enemy comes in like a flood. But the Bible says that the word of God will lift up a standard against him. The Bible says that the enemy comes to kill, steal and destroy. But God said I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. You're too blessed to be stressed. Stress comes to overwhelm you. Stress comes to, to look to block the power of God from moving in your life. But somebody say I'm too blessed to be stressed. Stress is an anxiety. Sometimes there's an anxiety of, 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 of walking out your destiny and your purpose. There is an anxiety of moving into the greater things of God. Even when we look at the life of David, the Bible says that David is in the backyard. He is tending to the sheep and his father Jesse calls for him to go check on his brothers. And, and we see that when you spend time with God, others around you may not be able to identify of the glory of God, but David knew his God. And the Bible says that when he went out to go to bring his brother's lunches that when he got there he found a Goliath sometimes our anxieties are because things in our life are enormous and giant and big but nothing is bigger than our God nothing is giant than our God nothing can destroy us nothing can defeat us a matter of fact the Bible says no weapon that is formed against us can prosper and every tongue that rises up in judgment it shall be condemned so we're dealing with stress we're dealing with anxiety we're dealing with bringing ourselves into the fruit of God and then the Lord begins to say to us that I have not given you the spirit of fear but of power love and of a sound mind he tells us to put on the mind of Christ we have to settle our thoughts and our emotions in God and know that if he brought us here he'll take us through he is a provider he is a way maker he is a keeper he is a buckler he is a shield Somebody say glory to God. He is our God. So we understand that stress comes to break us down mentally and emotionally. It comes to cause tension in our lives. But when you're blessed, when you understand that the favor of God is upon your life, when you understand that you're the apple of God's eye when you understand that he has called you for such a time as this and you start operating in the generational blessings so we find ourselves here in Genesis and we're dealing with Abraham the Bible says that Abraham comes from an idolatry family Woo! The first thing when God is going to bless us, we have to make the decision to walk away from any idols. To walk away from anything that will take our attention from God. Take our attention from his purpose. Take our attention from his righteousness. Take our attention from his power. And so the Bible begins to say that God speaks to Abraham and he says, I'm getting ready to bless you. I'm about to overtake you. I'm about to make you fruitful. I'm about to put you in the place of abundance. I'm about to put you in the place of plenty. But the first thing you're going to have to do is leave your father's house. 
Uh, the first point I want to make is whenever God is going to thrust you into a place of abundance, thrust you into a place of authority, thrust you into a place of growth, you must be willing to walk away from anything that wants to take your attention from God, anything that wants to distract you from your word, anything that wants to separate you from the love of Christ. The Lord begins to say to Abraham, you're going to have to leave your father's house. You know, sometimes we have to leave a place look at this that will that will cause us to be tempted that will cause us to be stagnated that will cause us to stumble have you ever been in a surrounding of people who spoke Jesus but didn't have the attributes of Jesus who talked like they walked with Jesus but they lacked the fruit of the spirit he told Abraham you're going to have to get out of your father's house if you're going to be blessed, you're going to have to let go of the traditions of your fathers, the ways of your fathers, the idolatry of your fathers, the, look, 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 the burdens of your father. You're going to have to pull yourself out of this place. He says, get away from your father. Get away from the familiar. Get away from what you're comfortable for. Anybody ready to go to a place that you've never been before? Anybody ready to do something you've never done before? Anybody ready to walk in a territory that you've never seen? because God is saying I'm giving the daughters of Queen Esther generational blessings I'm taking them into promise I'm taking them into greatness I'm taking them into overflow I'm going to cause them to rule somebody give God glory and say I'm born to rule he tells them you're going to have to come from out of your father's house come out of that country come out of that territory somebody say revelate me Sometimes you can be occupying a place that you're too big for. And God wants to stretch you to another place. And in order to go there, you have to leave the familiar. You have to leave the comfortable. You have to leave the, 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 the norm. You have to take up the extraordinary, the, look, the extraordinary and leave the ordinary. He says, you're going to have to get out of this country. You're going to have to get out this territory. You're going to have to get out of your father's house. You're going to have to get away from anything that's going to stop you from believing what I have for you because I'm about to test you. He is testing to see him, to see if he's willing to leave anything. Is there anybody in this room that you'll leave anything for Jesus? That you'll, you'll say what he wants you to say? You'll do what he wants you to do. Oh, come on now. Open up your mouth. He'll, he'll go where he tells you to go. You'll pray when he tells you to pray. You'll fast when he tells you to fast. You'll give when you, he tells you to give. Abraham, I want to know, can I trust you? Can I trust you to be faithful? Can I trust you to be bold? Can I trust you to be a courageous? Can I trust you to follow my instructions? Sometimes the hardest thing for us to do is to follow instructions. Have you ever given somebody something to do and you say, look, whatever you do, don't do this. And they go and do exactly what you tell them not to do. And this hour following the instructions is so important. So he tells Abraham, get from your father's house. Get from the countrymen. Get from what you are familiar with. I'm testing you to see will you be willing to leave all for me. And he makes him some promises. He says, Abraham, if you do this, I'm going to do something for you. God will never ask you to walk away from everything and not be willing to give you everything. God will never have you forsake something and not be willing to exchange something better for what you've left. Have you ever left anything? Has God ever failed you? Has he ever disappointed you? He is a way maker. He comes in and everything that you're willing to give up, he's willing to give you better. Just ask Job. Job got double for his trouble. The Bible says that his ladder was greater than his beginning. Anybody believe that your ladder is going to be greater than your beginning? He leaves that place and God makes him some promises. He says, the first thing I'm going to do for you, I'm going to make you a nation. 
I'm going to put you over some territory. I'm going to give you a place of authority. I'm going to give you a place where you can rule and you can reign. God wants you to reign in your community. He wants you to reign in your family. He wants you to reign when you're doing the work of God. He wants us to take the posture that he has given us dominion over all of the earth. He has given us power to go into all of the earth. He has given us authority to call those things that are not as though they were. Anybody have authority here? Anybody glad that you can lay hands on the sick? and they can recover. Anybody glad that you can speak a thing and God will honor it? Come on, let's give God praise. I'm going to make you a nation. I'm going to give you territory. I'm going to take you to a greater place. I'm going to open doors for you. He says, I'm going to show you a land that you have not seen. So God, you want me to follow you even though I don't see where I'm going. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. If we're going to get what God has for us, we have to have blind faith that I'm walking, but he's going to bless me. I'm walking, but he's going to restore me. I'm walking, but he's going to open up the gate. I'm walking, but he's going to cause me to be fruitful. I'm walking, he's going to cause me to multiply. And even though I don't see anything, it as if it has already happened I've learned to walk as God has already done it I'm trusting in the Lord with all of my heart not leaning to my own understanding I'm acknowledging him and he's directing me into a fruitful place Woo! I'm acknowledging him and he's, he's, he's directing me into an abundant place Abraham I'm showing you as you walk you'll see your cane You'll see your territory. You'll see your place of wealth. You'll see your place of abundance. You'll see your purpose. The Bible says that he promises him, I'm going to make you a nation. Can I speak to you? There's a nation inside of us. There's a world waiting for us. There's a people waiting for us. There's a lost world waiting for us. There's somebody strung out on drugs waiting for us. There's somebody wayward waiting for us. There's somebody that does not know Jesus that's waiting for us. Anybody, any Jesus people in here that you're looking for somebody to tell them God is a savior, a keeper, a way maker. God is saying there's a nation inside of you and it's your job to take it to them to prove it to them to preach it to them to share it with them to fast with them to pray with them because he's calling us into a place of abundance and into the duration of blessing and many people don't know that they're blessed many people don't know that God is for them many people don't know that he's died for their sins but tell your neighbor I have a revelation there's a nation inside of me there's a world waiting and I I want to do the will of God. Abraham! You're going to have to leave everything you know. And as you walk and go, your faith is going to guide you into new territory. Not only am I going to make you a nation, he begins to say, I'm going to bless you. So I heard the Lord say, he says, what I'm about to place on you will be undeniable. Woo. Oh, come on, say, what God is placing on me is going to be undeniable. You're going to see that the blessing of God is on me. The power of God is on me. It's going to be undeniable, indisputable. You won't, they won't be able to argue against it. They won't be able to stop it because God is putting favor on you. And favor becomes your shield. Favor becomes your buckler. Favor becomes your peace. Favor becomes your door. God says, I'm putting favor all around you. It's surrounding you like a shield. Favor is going to meet you at your job. Favor is going to meet you in your car. Favor is going to meet you in with your kids. They was going to meet you when you do the will of God. Somebody say he's blessing me. He's blessing me that when I walk in, they'll know the blessing is with me. When I go to high places. To purchase your copy of this powerful message, email us at gatmbooking at gmail.com. We thank you for watching the HP Spotlight. If this broadcast has been a blessing to you, we invite you to write us a letter or send a donation. If you're writing a letter, you can send it to P.O. Box 533, Windsor, Virginia 23487. Or you can make a donation via Cash App at dollar sign HP Music and Arts. Or via PayPal at HP Music and Arts at gmail.com. 
or via our website, www.hpmusicandarts.com. Or you can also mail that donation to P.O. Box 533, Windsor, Virginia, 23487. If you're an artist, author, or entrepreneur and would like to be featured on the HP Spotlight, you can also email us at hpmusicandarts at gmail.com. Again, we thank you for tuning in and we will see you next week.